Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Sounding the alarm against the dangers of the sun. Now, you probably found this video because of all of the information that we're getting about the sun and the changes in the Earth's magnetic field and how it is wreaking havoc on our planet. We have cattle dying by the tens of thousands. We have people dying as well in all of these areas of extreme heat coming from the sun. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about why this is all happening. We're going to look at what the Bible says about all of this, including the prophecies and our father's plan for us during this time. And we're also going to look at how it all ends up. Now, we're here in the third testament, kind of looking at the end here when we start to see it all start to get better. Well, let's save that for the end of the video. Let's start off with where we at in the prophecies so that when we get to the plan, we will feel more inspired and motivated to get within that plan for our salvation. It does get worse before it gets better, guys, but it does get better. So be sure to stay tuned. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to this channel and like hearing what the scripture has to say about all of these end time events. And Let's be prepared to leave a comment. Now, the first verse we're gonna look at is over here in 2 Peter chapter three. It's talking about the day of the Lord and how it's gonna come as a thief in the night. We've heard this story many times, how the heavens shall pass away with a great shout or the sound of a trumpet. But I know one part of this verse I've overlooked and that's where it says how the elements shall melt with fervent heat and Maybe it's because our father hadn't revealed it to us on how this is all happening. But turns out this fervent heat is going to come from the sun. We're going to find out in this video that the sun is going to separate us. It's even going to purify the earth. We see here, Peter says that the earth also and the works that are therein will be burnt up. This is part of the judgment that we're facing. James was also telling us about this heat. In verse 11, talking about how it's going to burn the grass and the flowers. Well, we see in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26, that the sun is actually going to get sevenfold hotter, seven times as hot as it is now. And just for comparison, guys, we learned in first Enoch when we did our videos on how the celestial calendars work. We found out that the moon is actually one seventh of the sun's light. Meaning that the sun that we're used to is only seven times hotter than the moon. But think of how great of a difference that is between the light or the heat coming from the sun versus the light of the moon. And it's only seven times greater. Well, what we see here in Isaiah is that we can expect the sun to be seven times hotter than it is now. But this again, guys, is judgment day. Like we said, the sun is going to purify the earth. It's going to bind up the breach of his people and it's going to heal the stroke of their wound. Well, we're going to find out what this is talking about when we get down into some of the other verses. Like, for instance, down here in Deuteronomy chapter 32, where verse 24 is telling us how these people who don't keep the covenant will be burned by the heat. That's that breach that it was talking about. You might want to read that whole chapter along with chapter 29 of the book of Deuteronomy, where we find in 24 that he's talking about this great heat, except this time he's relating it to what we saw in Sodom and Gomorrah, letting us know that that living parable is to be seen again here in the day of the Lord. Turns out the sun is going to be our greatest enemy during this apocalypse, like we see over here in the third testament of the Bible, chapter 55 and verse 79. It's mentioning the global earthquake that we hear about and people pay attention to a lot. But it's also talking about the, how the sun shall cause glowing rays that shall burn the surface of the earth. See, the sun is a purifier. This will all purify the earth. Basically going to burn away all of the wickedness. Now, we're already used to that. Like we see here in chapter 62, verse 13, the sun is a purifier. It's talking about how it evaporated even the foulest of puddles. Well, we've made quite a mess down here on this planet and the sun is actually going to help clean it up. 
And down in chapter 63 of the Third Testament, we find out why. It says that we have forgotten the law and have waited for the elements to remind us of his justice. And it's really easy to see this, guys. The majority of us here on the earth want to go about our days planning for the future as if we're going to live as normal for forever. Like things are never going to change and the Bible prophecies are not going to be fulfilled. Well, in doing so, we are ignoring the Bible altogether, including those laws. And many of us are only waiting for these apocalyptical signs to let us know that the end is upon us. Well, the end is upon us, guys. You see all of these hurricanes, these waters that's running off of their course, talking about the floods. There's an outbreak in earthquakes. But notice how it's talking about droughts here. This is all part of it. These things will all help awaken us. And for some of you, this is why you're watching this video in the first place. So let's go on. And before we get back to the bad stuff, let's take a look at some of the benefits of the sun. And all it is, we're going to have to remember that the sun is still necessary. It's still the bringer of life here on our planet. The thing about it, anything that can bring life can bring death. So we have to be careful. And one way I believe we can do so is by paying particularly close attention to chapter 11, verse 80, which is talking about us getting sunshine. Well, notice here how it says that we go out to receive the rays of the sun when it appears. Now, that's significant, guys. I try to get a little bit of sunlight every so often. But sometimes I forget and think about going to do it in the midday. Well, here in this verse, you see that it says that we're supposed to get the sun when it appears, which means in the morning. So that midday sun could be more dangerous than helpful. So like I said, we have to be careful out there. You see down here in chapter 30 and verse 31, it says that our body requires the sun along with air and water. That sun is actually providing necessary warmth, just like that heater does on a cold day. But just like that furnace, we always want to stay our distance and have much respect for it at all times, else we will get burnt. Chapter 54 and verse 11 tells us that exposure to the sun is necessary for our bodies. So why is it burning us up? Well, it turns out the earth is going through a pole shift. We're entering an electromagnetic null in our solar system and it will have a huge effect on our planet, humanity and everything around us, including all species of life down to the bugs. This is why the scripture talks to us a lot about locusts, guys. We understand that locusts are simply grasshoppers that have experienced a change within their brains somehow. Well, we learn in third Enoch that this change is the result of anomalies in the electromagnetic field. The problem is, is that during the transition in the middle of this pole shift, we're going to be in a weakened state as far as our protections from the sun. It's like our force fields are down and it's letting all of those deadly rays enter when they would normally have been blocked out and much of the earth is going to get scorched in the process. This is why it's called that great and terrible day of the Lord. The thing is, guys, we're not to blame our father for this. He's not the cause of this. Like we saw in the book of Deuteronomy, we chose this when we chose to step away from his covenant. But there are those who realizing that we're in this situation and the sun is burning us they're actually going to start blaspheming and saying that it is our father who is doing this to us. And that's not the case at all. He is not causing these hardships. He simply gave us his word and told us that they were coming, even giving us an option to survive it. That's what the covenant is all about. It's telling us what to do so that we can survive these events. So we're not to blame him when these things come up on us. We've actually chosen it. Like you see here in verse 36 of chapter 50 of the third testament of the Bible, where it speaks on our evolution 
and how we chose not to evolve spiritually. In other words, we chose to be carnal people, focusing only on the materialistic things of life and ignoring the things of our Father, who is a spirit. And when we discovered the elements, we chose to use them for selfish means, even going on to destroy one another. Well, it is these same elements that's going to turn around to destroy them. You see there it says, and so when you see the fire rain from the sky, it shall not be that the heavens have opened, nor that the sun torches you, but the work of man spreading death and destruction. Like I said, we chose this, guys. But what if you say that you didn't choose it? It's the other guys that chose this, and we had nothing to do with it. Even keeping the covenant despite them? Well, turns out our father has a plan to keep his people protected and shaded from the sun. Like you see here in Psalms chapter 121, verse 5 through 7, he says he is the shade. And the rays of the sun is not going to hurt his people. They will be protected. Like the book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16 says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. So he has full plans to protect these guys from the heat. This is the same thing we read over in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 10. You see, he has plans to lead these people just like he did the children of Israel back there in the wilderness, except now it won't be a visible cloud or a visible pillar of fire. But this guidance will come from within, from our conscious. All of this is spiritual now, guys, as far as our guidance and our instruction is concerned. And that's what Isaiah chapter four and verse six is talking about when he says, that there shall be a tabernacle for shade in the daytime from the heat. A place of refuge where he's going to lead us by those living fountains of water that we hear about. This is why we have to keep the covenant. That ensures that we have the spiritual connection we need to receive this guidance. Else we will be wandering out in the desert with the rest of humanity. Many of whom will not survive these events nor do they plan to. Many of these people have made the decision to ignore the rules, ignore the covenant, and just get caught up in the apocalypse. And some of them are actually looking forward to their own transition into the spirit world. While the rest of us, like we see here in chapter 25 and verse 28, will return to obedience to the laws after they're gone. And things will start to return to normal, to peace, abundance, and happiness. And that brings us back to the portion of the Third Testament that we was looking at in chapter 55, where it was talking about the end results of all of this. We've looked at verse 79 already, but look at verse 80. It says, after this great chaos, the nations will recover calmness and the elements will quiet. After my storm, night of the world, the rainbow of peace shall appear and all will return to their laws, their order and their harmony. See, guys, this is really just a bump in the road. This null in the electromagnetic field is something that the earth goes through periodically. The thing about it, humans have never been here before to go through it. So we had to have a little help to deal with it. And that is the covenant. Some people call the Bible the basic instructions before leaving earth, but I think a more fitting phrase is basic instructions before the level event, meaning the extinction level event. This will be the second time in human history that over 70% of all life on a planet will be extinguished, just like it was back during the floods of Noah. And the Bible gave us instructions on how to get through this flood, which is not water, like we knew it wouldn't be. This time is fire. But what's surprising is that the fire seems to be coming from the sky. Verse 81 ensures us that all of the trees, the skies, the water, everything is gonna go back to its normal state. Like I said, we just gotta get through this part. And 
I'm going to close with this passage from chapter 55 down here in 17 through about verse 19 when it's talking about the ark guys in the days of Noah he needed a wooden boat but in these days a wooden boat won't help in fact wood burns so we need a different kind of ark well here in these verses we learn what his ark is for all of humanity meaning the majority of the people on the planet who know nothing of the covenant and haven't been keeping the laws he says there in verse 19 that the ark is the law of love this is what the scripture means by love our brother well that means more than just saying that you love them this means actually doing stuff to help one another we actually physically got to help each other during these times including praying for one another but also we have to help them physically that is a way many of us will survive especially those who have waited for these catastrophic events to let us know that it is time to become obedient to the word and for Israel we see that the ark is obedience to the law and this is why you see so many guys talking about Passover as they realize that these events are coming up on us and we could do nothing about them they're starting to look at the laws of the Bible the thing about it they've grown up in a culture where truth is secondary so a lot of them think that they can just change the rules of Passover and make it start anytime they want thinking that they can gain the necessary oil to get within this ark that's not gonna work you can't just do Passover anytime you want but if you do find yourself this late in the game and wanting to get right get baptized again have your neighbor or your spouse to do it and then get ready to keep the rest of the feast days particularly the Sabbath day and go ahead and read the book of the covenant which is Exodus chapter 20 through 23 four chapters that explains what it is that we are required to do if we plan to survive this apocalypse subscribing to this channel could help too because we put out videos like this all the time bringing out these verses to help explain what's going on leaving a comment and pushing the like button wouldn't hurt but praying for me definitely will and I'll pray for you as well